a three under. That's why that putt was so big for Stewart. It could have put him in the lead playing the par 5 17th. Well, Westwood's shot really isn't that difficult, but he has to be careful here. And it, you know, does he have the nerve to take a chance? Because, you know, a, a safety valve or kind of a nervy bunker shot is going to send this thing way past the hole. I tell you, the ball is sitting very nicely, but it's an awkward stance. The ball is going to be well below his feet. Um, you know, from the center of the bunker, I don't think this is a real difficult shot, but uh, the awkwardness of his position in the bunker makes it just that much harder. Well, and, and when the ball's below your feet in a greenside bunker, the heel hits first and you cannot get spin on the ball. So for him to get this close, it would take all his skill to factor in the fact that he's trying to make history for the first time in his life. And this is really something to behold right here. Let's watch. The wind back in his face is an advantage. One of two things, either he's a little nervy, didn't feel like taking a chance, which is quite possible, or the lie just didn't allow it. Well, I think with the ball below your feet, if you're going to miss hit one, you're going to hit it lower than you choose out of the bunker. Yep, I agree with that. If he doesn't make this putt, you have three guys tied at two under, the other two standing on the tee just coming off bogey, having given up a share of the lead with a bogey at 14. Stuart Sink playing the par 5 17th at one under might be only one back by the time he gets to his tee shot. Well, this is this is really amazing because every time one of these players makes a mistake, it hasn't cost him much right. because they've made mistakes right behind him. Now Stuart Sink with a three wood off the 17th tee. Yeah. Hard right to left wind. Pretty much have to start at that bunker down the right hand side to hold the fairway. And that's started it right. And remember, Stuart Sink's been in this position before. He was missed a short putt on the last hole at Southern Hills in the U.S. Open, so he's had his opportunities. Well, and Stuart Sink, you know, was touted as the guy who was going to give Tiger some trouble back in the day, and uh, he's had a terrific career and not won as many tournaments as he would like. But he hits it so good, he qualifies for all Ryder Cup teams. And Westwood's away. He'll putt first here at 15 for par and to maintain his share of the lead or the lead. He leads alone right now. I tell you, the velocity of the wind uh, added just a tiny little element of luck there because he hit very nearly exactly the same shot as Ross Fisher. And uh, now he struggles for par. Looks to me like the putt has to start outside the hole on the right. The tee shot almost went in, and he walks out with a four. So after 45 minutes of a three-way tie for the lead, in a five-minute span, Westwood gets it alone and gives it back. Three at two under, sink at one under, Chris Wood in at one under. And again, 17, the par five that we uh, have seen in the history of Turnberry be so pivotal just think back to the last time the open was here. Nick Price made Eagle at 17. To end up outpointing Jesper Partovic who wasn't looking at scoreboards and dropped a shot at the 18th. And now Ross Fisher for birdie to get to one over par which is only three back and with that par five. Still keeps you thinking about a chance. Just never could recover from the quadruple bogey he made on number five. He had iron off the tee in the right hand rough. And then the mess from there when he advanced the next one about three feet and then hit it the next one after that into the left hand rough. And so you know he's got an eight, but a chance for birdie here. No signs of any movement from, uh, from his agent who's carrying his cell phone in contact with his wife if you were not with us at the very beginning of the broadcast or yesterday 
Fisher, the Englishman, his wife is uh, was due to give birth to their first child on Tuesday. He's been waiting for that phone call. Said as soon as he got it, he would leave, no matter what the situation was. Plane on standby, 20 minutes away at Prestwick Airport, hour flight home. It's one of those things that people have debated on British TV and in the newspapers. And look. The birth of your child is such an individual thing. That's whatever you decide is the right thing to do. You know, people give their opinions on such things. It's kind of laughable at times. So he wants to do good for him. They're four back right now. So it's Westwood, Watson, Goggin, all at two under. And uh, Andy, you're out there and sensing the wind conditions. Why don't you set up this tee shot at 15? Well, it's playing 215 yards. The wind is helping and from the right. There's a couple of options. You can ride the wind and try to land the ball on the very front edge of the green and hope it stops. Or you can take some kind of club and hit it up into the wind and cut it. It's a little bit more dangerous shot, but if you can pull it off, you can actually stop the ball in the green. We've seen a couple guys hit it up there pretty close, Andy. Tom Watson said a long time ago he didn't learn how to win these tournaments until he learned how to control his heart rate. And he did that by trying to control his breathing in four counts real slow, out four counts real slow. He's had a lot of time to sit on his tee and. Well, yesterday his tee shot landed on the down slope just short of the green and shot back over the green in that bunker. If you could somehow get it to the right of the hole, there's a little bit of slope back there that actually would act as a backstop, but it's hard to get it there with this right to left wind. Goodness, a little unlucky. Most balls that make it over that hill have gone all the way back, even past the hole. He hit that so nice. Let's move you up to 17. Guys, one off the lead. Stewart Sink. In an all important second shot. T shot hit a little soft, Curtis. Stewart with just outside 300 yards, 303 to be exact. Can he get it there? You know, he's going to have to ride the wind from the right. Uh, start at the two bunkers on the right hand side, but I think if he pitches the ball up on top, I think it's going to release all the way there. Well, he does have the two pot bunkers about 30 yards from the green that if he doesn't carry, that's the last place you want to be. Exactly. And I think that's his starting point. You, you can see him just kind of motion to the left with the direction of the wind. Black stick just at the left corner of the bleachers. Lucky went at it pretty hard. No, well, it's solid and working with the wind left. You know, that's okay. That's okay. That'll be a pretty simple, longish, but pretty simple bunker shot. Lee Westwood, 16th tee crosswind situation from the right. He really is going to worry about that long bunker down the left at 320 yards, I think. Avoiding that yeah. eases the hole. Perfect. Well, those last two shots that you just saw were happening. Let me show you what Goggin did on 15 T. Just a little bit less in that backstop that Andy talked about catches it. Now he's back in the bunker where Goosen and Westwood have not gotten up and down from the last two groups. If there's a playoff, it's a four hole playoff. Right now with three are sitting on two under and we're back at the 138th Open Championship after this message and a word from your ABC station team. Second shot, one consideration. Left of the hole anywhere. He put, he's put it in a perfect place off the tee. It's 139 yards. Yeah. Playing it with a nine yeah. iron. Anywhere oh. but there. That might have been the worst swing that Lee Westwood has made today. Such a short shot. Might be that adrenaline, you know, just, I mean, to hit it that far, but he, he has a pretty good lie. 
before Watson played. It was Goggins second out of the bunker at 15. Same situation with Westwood and what we saw with Goose in the group before. It's quite a bit easier though than what Westwood had, and he just misplayed it. He's kicking himself right now, but you know, that's pressure. He's got this for par. To remain tied for the lead. Well, it's you know it's unlucky because he hit such a nice shot into the green right at the flag, just two yards too far. Flex down into that bunker and now Stewart sink on the 17th Curtis. Yeah, very manageable bunker shot. Just got to calm your nerves and do what you know how to do. Spin. OK, good shot. Well, he's left himself a gut check, you know. <laughs> We're talking in the break that putting's kind of the measure of your heart and this is heart check gut check time. These are the putts you need to make to win major championships. And Back at 15, boys, both Goggin and Watson made their short putts. Goggin for bogey, Watson for par. So Watson and Westwood stand alone at two under in the lead. Now three at one under, although Sink has a putt to join the lead at two under par. You think Luke Donald's thinking about one shot somehow, somewhere out there? Maybe that putt at 18? Because Chris Wood posted one under and he's sitting there, maybe enough. And all the way back through. For many of these guys, what might have been. I mentioned it going to break, playoff of the Open Championship. They've been doing it this way since uh, well, 1989 when Cal Cavecchia won 20 years ago. And I think it's the right way to do a playoff at the majors. Four holes, cumulative score, five, six, 17, and 18. If we're tied, then the players that remain tied, if it's a multi three or more person playoff, then you play 18 over and over in sudden victory form. Tom Watson standing on the 16th tee. Long par four, 455. Bunker down the right at 287. A lot of extreme rough to the right. Another bunker down the left at 320. Just have to figure out some way to get this ball in the fairway. And that's it, Andy. Crosswind, anytime you have a crosswind situation, the, the targets diminish. And with it right to left, once the ball hits the ground here, it's going to be running hard toward that left bunker. Beautiful balance, beautiful rhythm, a beautiful swing, a beautiful shot. Stay in that fairway. Ho! Oh. oh. Now I'm back at the 16th green on the back edge. Pretty simple, straightforward chip and run. Third shot, Lee, Re Lee Westwood. Not a totally simple lie, though, Tom. Uh, this ball is nestled down in that short rough, so the two components are you have to make reasonable contact, and then your touch come into play down the slope. There was a lot of grass around the ball. Mm. Well, you could expect that with the combination of pressure and then the fact that you've got that burn on the other side of that flag. Roll it about five or so feet past the flag. It goes all the way down into the burn. Now to 17, Stewart sink for birdie. Just missed one this length on the hole before. Hard, hard putt. Wind cutting from left to right. It breaks left to right. And that was for a share of the lead. It's just, it looks like they're fumbling all over themselves, but the wind, the pressure, it's tough. Back to 16. On the tee. Goggin shows an iron. And it's headed down the fairway. Will it stay there? This one will, I think. Maybe not. Well, after a perfect tee shot, really a, a poor second and third chip, 15 feet, breaks a little left. Stayed out there. 
This is a game of misses and inches. So the lead changes once again, and so does the leader. It's all about finishing it off now, isn't it, Curtis? Well, that's what it always is, finishing yeah. it off. And we're not seeing a very good job of it right now, to be quite honest with you. And, guys, the whole talk about the history and the, what Tom Watson could accomplish today kind of got pushed to the back burner by this crazy, very ever-changing top of the leaderboard. Now it's back in place. Watson leads by one with three to go. He would be the oldest man by a decade plus to win a major championship. He would tie Harry Varden's near century old record of six open championships. Ty Hogan and player on the career major championship list with nine. The third player since the turn of the last century to win the same major in three decades, except this would be the 70s, the 80s, and the 2000s, skipping the 90s. He'd also be in Augusta and the U.S. Open and the PGA Championship for five years just based on this one, and, and 10 years in this championship his exemption as a past open champion would run out after next year at St. Andrews once he has passed his 60th birthday. Ross Fisher up ahead missed his birthday and, or missed, missed the birdie and now let's go ahead <laughs> to 16 again. <laughs> well there you see Watson evaluating the situation. Goggin is first to play over from the middle of the fairway. What's he have, Andy? He's 176 yards, and again, this hole is playing so difficult to win from right to left. Anything right of this flag stick, and the ball's going to be above his feet, which will help him get the ball moving also from right to left. Just to get the ball in the green right now onto this hole is a terrific play. The biggest concern is is the burn. I mean, that's that's a watery grave down there. So, you know, you've got the, right at that tower, right, Andy? Right to the left center of the green. Absolutely. Anything in the back left corner is a wonderful shot. Give yourself 50 feet and two putt and get out of here with four. That would be a great play. That's it. You've got a big bank on the left side of this green that really helps the ball feed toward the center. So. It adds another 15 or 20 feet of width to this shot. This is out there to take, and nobody's taking it. Sink on 18T. Well, headed up the right center of the fairway. Nice. Okay, that'll give him a look at the downwind second shot. One under is the clubhouse lead. Stewart trying to find a way to make a birdie and get in it too. We've only had one birdie in the last almost hour and a half at 18. Back to 16 and our leader. Tom Watson, second shot. How much does he have left, Danny? 171 and really unlucky that this ball got into the rough. If he'd have been a foot away, he'd be able to spin the ball much better. Now he's got to just hit a good solid shot. And if it if it takes off a little bit and gets to the back of the green or even in the back rough, that's fine. You just cannot have it float out of this rough and come up short. 171. The wind has turned back from right to left a little bit into him right now. Consider that a membership bounce. Now on the 17th tee, Lee Westwood, and he has to has to do something here. Had three eagles already today, numerous birdies. Has to make birdie. Not good. 
Nothing equals the pressure of the final nine holes of a major championship. It's something this man has handled eight times before, but it's been so long. It's been over a quarter century since he last did it. But Tom Watson's hanging in there and leads by one at the Open Championship. Virtually a straight putt. Oh, one time! Oh, you don't want to leave these kind. Not bad, about three feet left. 36 year old American Stewart Sink, one off the lead, second shot at 18. Pretty clean line in the rough, 193 yards straight down the wind. Cannot land this ball on the green. Just no way you can put it on the green. You're right. This might turn out okay, Billy. Well, it's getting better. Yeah, that, that's a really good shot. We watch the shots come in here all afternoon. It's very good. Six gonna have a look at birdie. We've only had one birdie in the last dozen groups here at 18. And I haven't seen anybody in the position where Sink has been right now. 16. Goggin for par. He had a tough fly up on that hillside. Played to that point. So another one falls back. Now, Tom, make a good stroke. Pretty straight putt. Sometimes they're the most difficult. Center cut. How important is par all the time? especially down the stretch. Well, par has been good on all these holes, but it won't be good enough on the 17th hole. This has been the second easiest hole on the golf course today. First easiest the first two days, 559 yards. Today, the wind out of the right, maybe a little tiny help. The one place you do not put it is, want to put it in this bunker 325 yards off the green. But some of the guys are hitting three woods off the tee, easily reachable. You have to come in from the right. Today's hole location all the way back center. We've seen some shots in there close in two. We've seen three eagles today, numerous birdies. It's going to be good stuff. But you have to make a birdie here if you're going to win. Tom Watson. Two on the par with a one-shot lead going to the 17th tee. is certainly in the driver's seat right now. Most important to drive it in the fairway. We just saw Lee Westwood right in front of him pull it in the left rough. And here he is. And I tell you, sometimes you have to catch a break, and he might have caught one right here because he has a pretty good lie. He's trying to play a five iron to the green. He can only see maybe the tip top of the flag stick. That would be some kind of five iron. 16 to the front. This is unbelievable. Are this is some me? shot. Well, Curtis Goosen just made eagle right in front of him. Well, Lee Westwood, what a huge break. He hasn't hit many bad shots at all in the four days. Of course, about the worst shot he's hit, and he gets a huge break. Look at this swing. He has a good swing for the rough. He gets very steep coming down. Got lucky, really lucky with a clean lie. Such a great putter, and he's a great pressure putter, and what an opportunity he's given himself on 17, the 71st hole of this championship. One shot behind Tom Watson, a chance for Eagle to get to three under par. Now, this fits right into Watson's strength, this hole. Boy, he's been driving it so well all week, Paul. One more. Okay, actually being in the short rough might be a little help, be a little cushion under the ball. Get it up in the air. All right, so Westwood has a putt for Eagle to get to three under. Watson's at two under. Stewart sink for birdie and for the moment for a share of the lead. Yeah, we say pet putting is the measure of your heart. Well, here we go, Stewart. This is your big chance. Let's see what you got. Get off! Looks good. 
yes. yes. Stewart sink post two under par. For the moment, tied with Watson. That's a lot of heart right there. Great birdie on the 18th hole. Six different men to hold the lead in this final round. Stewart sink at two under, but Westwood has an eagle putt to get to three under. Stewart sink has moved himself to the top of the leaderboard at the open. The unique thing about uh, the final hole at, at an Open Championship is that you have the stands where you may have 20 to 30,000 people. There is a sense of elation to be able to walk through that crowd knowing that there's a good chance you've won the Open Championship. The feeling Tom Watson has known before, the grandstand's a little bit smaller, but uh, 50,000 people will say they were in those grandstands if Watson is able to win. Stewart Sink has rolled in a big putt to join Watson atop the leaderboard on this uh, fast changing Sunday, Championship Sunday here at the Open. Lee Westwood has an eagle putt coming at 17. And drama playing out here over these last couple of holes. Curtis Strange has it over at 17. Lee Westwood's third shot for eagle, 20 feet straight up the hill. And remember, he eagled the seventh hole earlier to finally and first time take the lead in the Open Championship. Oh, you think the wind would have pushed it just slightly. What a perfect looking putt. Oh my gosh. Well. That's Birdie putting back in a tie for the lead with Stuart Sink and Tom Watson. Man, look at this. It wants to come left. It wants to come left, and it just doesn't do it. Why now? <laughs> well, three Todd. Only Westwood and Watson can do something about it. Now Ross Fisher. Well, Watson can control his destiny right here. Oh. Andy, what kind of lie did he pull? He was a little bit unlucky. The ball settled down. It's not one of those nice, juicy ones that the amateurs at home love in that first cut. Uh, the key is can he hit it solid enough to carry these two bunkers up here 30 yards short of the green. He has 267 hole. 237 to the front. So if he can just hit some kind of solid shot out down, down the right side over these two bunkers it should bound up onto the green. Yeah, Andy, that's about 207 over the two pot bunkers we're talking about. So. Solid. Perfect. Well, darn near perfect, but pretty doggone good anyway. What a shot that was. Boy, it really hit hard, chased through the green, and he knew it too. Could you hear him? Say you can too tell. Too far. Yeah. You heard? I heard him say too far. Almost as soon as he hit it. You can tell by the way he looks at it. Oh, what the yeah. shot is like and how he hit it. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. You know, and in, in his strength right now is his long game. There's no doubt about it. Boy, watch this swing right here. We've got this on Exmo. That club is square at the top. Look, who who at age 59 takes it past parallel in that position? Not many. And then a wallop with the right hand. Fully released. Perfect balance. Stays down and through. Nice high finish. He releases the golf club as well as anybody in the game today. It was always to be envied, wasn't it, Curtis, when he played full time on the regular tour? You'd watch Watson hit balls and say, wow, I wish I could release it like that. Well, he hit as many balls as anybody else on the regular tour. In the meantime, up at 18 T, Lee Westwood, and that's the 17th fairway over there to the right. So uh, the drama plays out right in front. It's a perfectly staged theater here. Westwood Watson on the course at two under, sink in at two under. 
and it'll be right to left. He wants to avoid this big bunker on the left that you cannot play from, and there's been a bunch of players in it. towards that bunker, heading towards the bunker. It, oh my it, goodness, it's wow. in it. Wow. He cannot, he cannot get to the yep. green from there. If he does, he'll be the only one. And I'm not sure he knows it's in the bunker. I'm sure he doesn't actually, because it's completely blind from the tee. IBM golf track of where that tee shot ended up. Yep, here's a good look at this hole. It's been lengthened by 30 yards this, uh, since uh, 94. Went hard off the right, and there's that bunker, 260 yards. He's tried to avoid it, but he's in it, and it is a death trap for his championship hopes, I feel. You never know, though. He can make par maybe from uh, a pitch out. And we've seen plenty of shots come into this green. Ideally, as hard downwind as it is, you want to land it short. Try to run it back up into the middle. Everything runs off. The green's kind of perched up in the air a bit. Not a lot of birdies. The theater 18T walked back up. Watson welcomed at 17. There's Ross Fisher off that 18th tee. Two over, four back. You know, you live a lot on crowd reaction out here, and I am pretty sure from the silence of the crowd that Lee may know that that bunker just swallowed up the ball. Well, like I said, Judy, if he can advance that ball far enough to get it on the green, he'll be. Really the only one. Well, I'm just going to get to it to get a look. Yeah, we see you, Judy, heading down from our position along the fairway, so we'll watch. Get back to us when you know. So a moment ago at 18, Jim Furyk, a really tough day. Started poorly, never got it turned around. <laughs> 76, Jim Furyk today. Paul mentioned Goose and Eagle at 17. 72 for Goosen. Finishes the championship even par, tied for fifth. Back to 17. Well, Tom Hunt Watson's hit a lot of important shots in his career, but they're all very important right now. How's the lie, Andy? Is actually sitting down in this cut of rough, and I've seen Tom putt the ball out of this type of rough numerous times. I think that's the safest play, and I believe that's what he'll do. Well, Matthew Goggin will be first to play. It didn't look like he had the putter out, though, didn't it, Curtis? This is for birdie. So 65 feet. Great putt. He needed something there, though. Well, Andy, it looks like he's going with a putter. This is the percentage play. Um, yeah, he, he is so good at picking. And one of the problems he has with this stroke, sometimes he picks the club up very quickly and then hits down on it. Well, this is the time that's perfect. Make that stroke, just hop it down there, roll up next to the hole, make your four, and just run to the 18th tee. Hit it. Hit it. Perfect. If it didn't go in, it's a kick in. And with that, Tom Watson will take a one shot lead into the last hole for his six claret jug trip victory this is this is amazing this this it's like fantasy land this is no one would ever have dreamed this if you would have told somebody that you thought tom watson would would contend or win the open championship in 2009 they'd have, they'd have looked at you like you're crazy and you know it's hard to put this into perspective paul that 59 years old we've we've all given up the game and we're a whole lot uh, younger than than he is <laughs> it's uh this for the lead Come on. 
I hear you, Curtis. It's it's he's writing one heck of a chapter in the story of his life right here. And golf's life. It's over a hundred steps to walk back up to that 18th tee. Walks Watson's made before, but never in the aura of such history. Something the game has never, ever seen. Anything like it. Now Westwood back in the 18th fairway in the bunker. Judy, got to look over there. Well, here's what I've seen. He uh, got to the bunker and saw the ball and put his hand on top of his head. Um, the right half of the bunker is the most difficult portion of the bunker from which to play. He has as good a chance as he could have from this position. He's only about three and a half feet into the bunker. I don't think the ball is sitting absolutely perfectly, but it's not bad. 186 all the way to the hole, but just 161 to the front and the front and or the front edge would be a heck of a shot. Uh, I think he's got a nine iron in his hand. He has to just blast this and hope he can get it up very fast. It'll be long enough with the wind at his back if he gets a solid strike. There's one back. This may be the shot of his life. Got it well up in the air. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. Really, really, really brilliant just to hit that ball, that flush in that situation. I can't tell you how good that was. Well, he took a chance he had to. He knows he knows Watson made birdie, and if he pitches out, he's virtually done. So if he makes four, he forces Watson to make par. Well, he's already going to have to make par because of Stewart Sink, Mike. But, yep. but certainly he'd be out of it. I don't know if I could swallow mm -hmm. if I was on the 18th tee at age 59 with a one shot lead, but Watson chugs down the energy drink. And it doesn't look like he's going to really have to wait long. Fairway's going to clear. Tom Watson will be ready to go. A moment ago, they posted. Watson's birdie at the 71st hole. Up at 18. Up on the big board. And there's a little cheer. Lee Westwood now walking up 18. His welcome. Kind of looking at all the all the history that can happen with a simple par down this hole unless Westwood makes a miracle putt here. But uh, it, it, it's so much more. It's stuff. It's stuff that's hard to quantify. With what Watson's trying to do and Westwood, kind of a, a laugh through the nervousness of the moment. Well, I've got the sweaty palms going here. How do you not? How do you not? Looking back down the fairway. Uh, Game. Most of the photographers cleared back in the area. It looks pretty settled down here. And do you see anything to hold up back there? No, I think I think he's just, you know, there's a lot of people moving around. I think he just wants to make sure he gets the right club and makes the right decision. Very simply, just start it down the right side and hit just a nice solid fairway metal like you've been doing all week long. Oh, he looks is a cucumber on the outside, but you can bet his gut is turning on the inside. He's never been shy about expressing the nervousness that he's felt throughout his career when in contention. Well, they're trying to get a cart move down here right at the beginning of the fairway that's up against the that's up against the the metal uh, fencing. Meantime, up the green, Andy, 461 yards away, Westwood is stalking around looking at the long birdie putt at his caddy tent to the flagstick. He kind of walked side by side the line there. Again, we showed you earlier the birdie putt that he had to get in the playoff the U.S. Open last year. Just recently, we've seen a couple of birdies. Stuart Sink making one. Tong Chai Jai Di from Thailand made one before that, but we only had one birdie 
in a dozen group stretch really for about two hours. Okay Watson's ready. Absolutely perfect. Wow. Boy, you bet it is. He didn't just <laughs> lay it way out to the right or anything like that at all. It's the guts of a burglar at age 59. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's emotional to be able to watch this and know this man for so long. There's so many of us that have respected and admired him. This is the area that looked, reminds me of where Nicholas made the putt in 77. Westwood's chance. Watson had knocked it in there tight. He made his birdie, but Nicholas made the long putt to force Watson to make. This is for birdie and a share of the lead. That's not easy coming back. That's the putt that Luke Donald missed earlier. The putt Chris Wood missed earlier. Guys have been missing that putt that he has coming back to the left. So Westwood has to make that to join Stewart Sink in the clubhouse at two under as Watson moves down the 18th fairway. We're taking so many different angles and looking and trying to compare. And because golf is uh, a sport, since we cover it as sport and play it as sport, and very athletic people are very successful at it. Also because of the timelessness the guys who can play into their 40s and 50s to be competitive you have skill factor in there as well Watson trying to join player and Hogan nine all time majors fourth on the list behind Hagen Woods and Nicholas. The point being as we try to look for other sports to compare and other athletes you know we li we live in a day where we feel like we have to compare everything. There's nothing that compares to this. The sport is unique and within the sport there's never been anything like this. It stands on its own merits. Ross Fisher to finish with a birdie. Fisher who had the lead in the championship at five under par after he birdied the second then four under after he bogeyed four. For the rest of his life, we'll remember the fifth hole at Turnberry, where he made a quad. He made a quadruple bogey. Never made another birdie after that. And now I'm sure he will hustle home and uh, await the birth of his first child. I'm sure for many of you who are watching this, it kind of takes you back to the uh, maybe the generation of golf that uh, you watched with somebody else watching Tom Watson in his heyday the thoughts of uh, what people would think seeing Watson do this now Westwood to stay at two under same thing everybody's missed that putt to the left well, played such a miraculous shot out of the bunker what a shame for Westwood who's he looked like he'd be the guy today when he made eagle on seven, Mike, and I'm sure a huge disappointment for Lee Westwood. So Stewart Sink is inside the clubhouse at two under par. Lee Sinker Watson. Westwood bogeyed three of the last four holes. He was never able to do it. Matthew Goggin's going to play first, but Andy, you've uh, kind of assessed what Tom has. Yeah, he has a perfect lie, 187 yards. It's going to be straight downwind. I got to believe he's going to land this ball short of the hole like he did yesterday. I don't see him carrying it up on the green because it could just go right through the green very easily. I've seen a lot of people do that and not be able to get up and down. Goggins even par. Second shot. That was from 220. Guys, it's real simple. Can you hit a good iron shot, put it in the middle of the green if you can? He's the open champion again. Well, he's going to have to call on all his experience, all his nerve. He's been here before, he's done it before.
Easy, easy. Up and down from there. That was an eight iron. He just absolutely nuked it. All the adrenaline going. Right over the flag, just over the green. It's a seven iron. He hit 77 to two feet to make that birdie to win the duel in the sun. In this sport, in all of sport, no matter what happens with the next couple of strokes, one of the most extraordinary performances you will ever be lucky enough to witness, authored by one of the game's all-time greats, Tom Watson at the Open Championship 2009. Play first here. Watson. Rarely can you ever tell Watson's like or dislike of a situation by the look on his face. He is studying this one pretty hard. The lie is not great, Paul. It has settled down. If it was six inches shorter, he could putt it very easily. But he's got a couple options where he can take sand wedge and kind of chunk it up there take maybe a six or seven iron and just pitch it but he's going to go with the putter there's going to be an awful lot of grass between the club face and the ball here maybe mm -hmm. to get a clean hit on this would be very difficult I've seen a couple shots from here, Andy, and no one's gotten it close. It is doable, though, into the wind. He's one of the greatest pitchers of all time. It looks like he has out the putter, though. Yep, it does. Up and down to win. Well, how, uh, how ironic, after all the years and all the talk of Tom Watson and putts of those lengths that you see right there, if he does not make that and makes bogey, Watson and Stewart Sink would be in a four-hole playoff, which would be 5, 6, 17, and 18, cumulative score. If tied after that, you play 18 over and over. Matthew Goggin out here in even par. It's tied for fifth. You know, if I'm the caddy here in this situation, I'm going to go right up to Tom Watson, put my arm around him, and say, Tom, you've made a thousand of these putts. Just give me one right here. <laughs> and I'd tell him early, I wouldn't wait. Tied for third. Goggin. 
Hit a great putt. Goggin, Goose, and Luke Donald will tie for fifth. Englishman Lee Westwood, Chris Wood will tie for third. Seventy three Goggin today. About an eight or nine footer, Andy North. That's that's an eight to ten footer. I actually like this distance. He can stroke this one. He's going to make this and win. There. And so we'll have a four hole playoff with Tom Watson and Stuart Sink watching bogeys the 72nd hole with a zero confidence putt at the pressure of the moment. So we'll head back to the fifth and Stuart Sink, who made that huge birdie at 18, gets himself in a playoff. Somebody will either win their first ever major or their ninth. Ever major. Again, 5, 6, 17, 18 are the holes. 5 along par 4, 6 the long par 3. Here's the putt again, Paul. Yeah, well, it's not completely shocking that he would be tentative here. You know, you've got a chance to win, but at the same time, it has been as a bit of his Achilles heel, let's face it. He just doesn't release it at all. You see him slow down. Extra holes for Tom Watson now. Just go sign your card, get your card right. Take a big gulp of some more of that energy drink and mm -hmm. get ready for your four hole playoff. Stuart Sink only had a couple of holes to wait. So he will get set as well. We'll go to the fifth and a playoff for the Open Championship with two Americans, Stuart Sink and Tom Watson. And we'll have that as we continue after this message and a word from your ABC station.